Brightstorm has thousands of high-quality videos covering all major subjects. Please check out more at www.brightstorm.com. So let's talk about magnetic fields. What is a magnetic field? Well, a magnetic field is a vector field, and that's this kind of mathy concept, which basically just says that you've got a vector at each point. And this vector field is associated with forces. It's just like the electric field. Remember that an electric field always points in the direction that the force on a positive charge would point in if you put that positive charge somewhere. Magnetic fields are a little bit different. They're a little more complicated as far as their relationship to the actual force. But you can still think of magnetic fields as associated with a force. They don't point in the same direction, but they're associated with a force. All right, magnetic fields are generated by permanent magnets, which are also called hard ferromagnetic materials. The word ferro is similar to the word um, ferrous, which is associated with iron. So ferromagnets are associated with iron, even though iron itself is not a hard ferromagnet magnet. You can't make a magnet just out of iron, at least not at ordinary temperatures. But there are other hard ferromagnetic materials that do generate magnetic fields. Now, magnetic materials have two poles. These are kind of like electric charges, but they're not the same. So just like electric field lines go out of positive charges and end at negative charges, magnetic field lines come out of North Poles and go into South Poles. However, very, very, very important distinction, probably the most important distinction between magnetic fields and electric fields. Electric fields are created at positive charge and they are destroyed at negative charge. It is not that way with magnetic fields. Magnetic fields don't ever start or stop anywhere. They always make closed loops. Always, 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 always. So let's see what that means about the magnetic field line diagram associated with a simple permanent magnet. All right, so we've got our North Pole, we've got our South Pole. We've got magnetic field lines coming out of the North Pole. So they're coming out. And then they go in to the South Pole. Great. So now, how do I connect these lines? Well, these North Pole lines are going to come around, and just like with electric fields, they're going to spread out when there's room to do so. And when they're close together, that represents a stronger magnetic field. So we've got it coming around like this, and we've got it coming around like this. So that's our magnetic field. Notice that the magnetic field is strongest at the poles, and then down here, it's not that strong. But now, what happens inside the magnet? This is where the difference is between electric fields and magnetic fields. Inside the magnet, the magnetic fields continue all the way through, just like this. So in some sense, a permanent magnet is kind of like compressing together all the magnetic field lines. They're real far apart outside the magnet, but inside the magnet, it's like they've all been squished together. So that's really where the magnetic field is going to be the strongest. And that's going to be associated with something called the permeability of the magnet, because it's how well can the magnetic field permeate this hard ferromagnetic material. All right, now let's see what magnetic field lines do when we take two magnets and we put them near each other. All right, so let's consider this one first. So we've got a North Pole. That means that we've got field lines coming out. We've got a South Pole, field lines coming in. Well, geez, that's easy. There we go, right? So it'll be just like that going down. All right, what about here, North Pole? Field lines coming out. Here, South Pole, field lines coming in. 
So we'll connect again, just like this. Just like that. Now notice that if I push these closer together, these field lines get nice and strong and it actually looks like what's going on inside the magnet. So this represents attraction. The north pole of a magnet attracts the south pole of another magnet. And if I put them together, they just become one bigger magnet, right? I try to pull them apart and they don't like it. So these field lines would start to get bigger and bigger and bigger until they all just connect here and the two magnets are just separate. All right, what happens if I take two of the same pole and put them next to each other? All right, let's look down here. So now we've got North Pole, North Pole. Again, out, 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 out. Now what's the difference? I mean, that looks just like it did before. Well, the issue is that now I can't connect them because these guys are all going out. So this one's going to come up and like that. This one's going to come up and like that. Now, just like all field lines, they can't cross because the magnetic field at every single location has to be in a certain direction. It can't, you know, be schizophrenic like this. Oh, part of it's pointing that way and part, no. All right, it's got to not cross. So these field lines are not allowed to cross and that causes a lot of trouble with them because they kind of are forced to go around like this and around like this and down like this and down like this and then these guys are doing the same thing. So here you can see that this situation is aggravated if I try to push the two North Poles closer together because these field lines aren't allowed to cross and they're just pushing against each other. This creates something that we can call magnetic field pressure. And so what happens when you have two like poles and you try to push them together, you feel this magnetic field pressure that wants to push them apart. They need to have room to exist on their own. And if you try to push them too close together, they don't have that room. So they're going to complain. So that's magnetic fields. And by two, I can't do this with you two laughing back there. <laughs> so if we had, no, that's not right. Three coplanar points. So have you ever gotten off an airplane? <laughs> <laughs> that should be less than. Yeah. Dang. Is it like 500 degrees in here or what? All right, so when you're in chemistry class, you're going to be doing a lot of work. You're going to be starting over. So as an example, we could consider like you've got a chain hanging from two, um, two fix. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>